Oh my god. There's been a tear in the space-time continuum. Obviously, the time continuum has been disrupted, creating this new temporal event sequence resulting in this alternate reality. Kyra's turned into a real live little Yay. girl. Uh, my hair is long and salty. What's going on, Mama? Well, we always wanted to do a boat tour and we decided just to skip this one forwards um, and just show you around. You want to show the boat? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so this is a Fusion 40. It was designed by Gary Lidgard. It is an Aussie boat, an Aussie catamaran. This one was made in a factory here because they built them in a factory for a while. Now it's a kit boat, so you can get this boat sent to you build it yourself or with a ship right. As you can see, the cockpit is very spacious. We've added a few things, nice sliding windows, and we've added this door. Boat is out there, we'll know where we've got this idea from. I stole this idea from the sea winds. Went to a manufacturing company, had them make it up. So, helm is down, it's a down helm. When you drive it, kind of like a tank, with your head through the window. You got twin controls here, so you can spin it just like a tank. Helm position. You can see quite a lot through the open windows there and the chart plotter. Because it's a catamaran, sometimes you might be sitting inside having a beer or dinner while you're sailing, but um, when you're out at the helm, this is where you are. Comfy seat to keep an eye on things. Some people like down helms, other people want them up high. It kind of all depends for us because we do a lot of offshore. We like this because you can get down out of the weather, you got a view right through the windows. And if you want, Take this one on, Dada. you can pop your head up to get a face full of wind. It does make it a little bit difficult coming in and out of marinas, thanks, darling, or in tight anchorages but they're all compromises. All the lines come back to here. Main sheet on a traveler and head sail here, which I'll show you a little bit further. Only one line for the head sail because it is a self tacking head sail. Uh, and then the other lines that we would have come back is for the screecher, which is on an endless line, uh, which I put in which runs to here, so this runs out to a little block, or we can run it to that winch there. So screecher lines to this winch, or on the other side. Oh, the surfboards. Oh, surfboard rack, let's not forget that. Dad's special design. Oh, mama. Simple and very easy and effective. Of course, it's not the only three boards on board the boat, but that's a subject for another time. Yep, racks for all the salty things. And comfy places to sit on passages. Or for sundowners at Anchorage. Get out of my spot. Captain's table, captain's seat. Not for crew. In fact, everyone has a favorite spot on Rio. Right, darling. Is that your sailing spot? This, ladies and gentlemen, is Kaya's sailing spot. Where she can see everything that's going on. She can talk to the captain to make changes to the sail plan. Peppa Pig? I'm Peppa Pig and I'm not Peppa Pig. And, just Peppa. and she can see exactly what's going on. Let's check the front deck. Man. We had to put these for Kaya, which was a big job. You will see in one of the episodes, I think. <laughs> now we love this deck space of the Fusion. I'm sure Kaya really appreciates it too. When we've got people visiting, lots of space for just lounge, lying down, exercise. As you know, space in the boat is very limited, so having some outdoor space is really, really a bonus. And I, I think really this, this is a really good balance of inside and outside space. Kyle loves the trampolines, really good size for a 40-foot boat. 
one of the first things you'll notice about the Fusions is a self-tacking head sail. So pros and cons for each. The con being the size is a little smaller normally than you'd have for the ratio of head sail to mainsail, but the pros for single handing, amazing. So we've got one line. This one line leads to this track. So the track runs back and forth when you're tacking or when you're jibing and you change that just with these stops here to get your optimum angles. And what that means is if you're sailing at the same degree on starboard and turning to the same degree on port, you do not have to change a thing with the head sail. In front of that is the screecher and this is the afterburner for this boat. This creature is it's huge. I guess it's like a Genoa that you would have on a mono hull. But you pull this bad boy out and we are off like the wind. So we sail anywhere from 70 degrees pretty comfortably all the way back to directly behind at 180 depending on where your main is. In that cabinet we've got the spinnaker and the spinnaker runs off the end of the bow sprit. You can also run off bows depending on where is coming from and that again is a pretty good day if you're running the spinnaker the boat is traveling nicely the main we got a pretty big main for a cat 65 square meters it is a radial cut with three reefs in it three slab reefs you can see we've got lazy jacks and a boom bag for us we find that to be bulletproof it will come down it's on cars not slugs so it will come down in whatever weather, whatever conditions, if you drop that halyard, that main is coming down. And there are plenty of times when you want it to happen, you need it to happen, and it does. And we like that. Don't we, monkey? Now I'm gonna show you the most important spot of the boat is where the food gets mm. prepared. Um, I really love this galley, it's nice and cozy, it's, at the same time there's a lot of bench top space that we can use whenever we need, it's, yeah, it's just a lot for a 40 foot boat, galley up which is when we were looking for a catamaran that was high on the list, we've got a 3 gas burner which um, for me was an upgrade coming from the mono where we only had 2 and really nice oven, we make our roasts, uh, banana breads, bread, mm. cakes, everything. Um, so that is, for me, a must. What about the view from up here, Mama? I know, so Cameron living is so amazing. I'm, I'm used to it now, but at the start it was like, wow, I can cook and feel like I'm part of the scenery, watch, watch Kaya, watch denim, talk to people and watch the view um, this is also very amazing in this camera this is another amazing thing about Rio that we love we've got heaps of fridge and freezer space there's two, two drawers and they're deep um, that's fridge, fridge and freezer and freezer Two fridge and two freezer. I know, so much Whoa, space. look at all that meat in there. Meat Yay. and fish. Meat and fish. And spoiled, you guys are spoiled. Some food in here. What's going on here? You're doing your own tour? I got my camera. You got your camera? Um, For me it was an upgrade coming from... I didn't realise at first, but while we were earnestly filming our boat tour, Kaya, at the age of two and a half, picked up a GoPro camera, turned it on all by herself, and bored with our presentation, started doing her own tour. Food in here. What's going on here? You're doing your own tour? I got my camera. You got your camera? And some food in here. On um, this one. And the other one is ice cream the next. The other one got ice cream. And <laughs> another. Ice cream and some canvas and dummy here. And some toys. Oh yeah, where do oh, we keep your toys? Kai's tour. Okay, you give us Kai's tour. What else? There's some toys. Where are the toys? Down here. Oh, you lifted the lid. No, that looks like a footstool. That's not toys in there, is there? Oh my Ooh. god. Are they all toys in there? Whoa. A train set? Or a train set? Down the stairs here? Oh, 
I need my camera. Oh, I need your camera. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay, Kai's to it. Can they bring the here? Whose room is this? Oh, it must be Kai's room. Your name's on the door. Yeah, and where? How do you sleep? Oh, pretty good. Um, then you close the door. You would close the door when you're sleeping, knowing. Yeah. Look how big your bed is. You got clothes and toys? Oh, yeah. And some baskets. Some baskets. And see drink on buoy. Yes. And a baby cam. So we can keep an eye on you. Long baby for Kaya. Oh, is this your clothes? For clothes in here? Where's your books? Point to them. Okay. Okay, the ice cream fridge, the toy box, and Kaya's bedroom was the extent of her tour. So, back to mum now in the galley. And also a really good size sink that uh, we could even use to wash clothes if we needed to. Oh, and a baby in there at one point. Yes, there was a baby in there at one point. And good amount of storage too, actually. Storage here, uh, drawers, drawers. What's in that cabinet there? Ooh, Friday cocktail hour. Rio Saloon. So we have the typical boat curved table. This goes down, makes a bed. This is navigation area. Handy little seat. Chart plotter swings around, so you can either plot your course from here radio is here, comes around, speaker in the cockpit and of course big screen TV or what counts for big screen on a boat anyway Starboard hull Rio is the owner's version layout so which means the port side is all for the owners and the starboard side is the guest side so we've got Kaya's room onto the stern and the guest room on the bow. Lots of storage in the corridor as well um, that we use for more kitchen stuff and our pantries are here, here and here so lots of space for pantry. Some food here. This is just the best. Guest room! Ew. Uh, it is lovely having the guest room on the other hall rather than on the same hall as us. They have a lot of privacy, space with a queen bed. It's pretty much mirror to our side except the guest room have their own ensuite over there. Oui. Fancy! Couple of surfboards. So it's toilet and shower. So shower. It's way smaller than our size, but it's still actually much better than what we had in the mono hall. Little sink, toilet, shower area with good drainage, and you're not showering on top of the toilet. <laughs> oh, somebody already using the guest bed. Hey, who's in the bed? Goldilocks, you're in the bed. Um, and there's some storages, smaller storages under the bed and bigger storage on the side here on the other hall. Guy's room also doubles as my garage. Tools, spare parts for days. And also at the back of that is a generator. We have a Sea Wasp or a Lombardini generator at 6 kva which is heaps so on the days when it's a little cloudy this will run whatever you like microwaves air fryers air conditioning top up the batteries yeah plenty of power if you need it
Brio is an owner's version, which means the port side is the owner's side. So this is one of the things we really liked about Rio after living on a monohull for three years. Look at the size of that bathroom. In boat language, this is a pretty big bathroom. Small if you live in a house, but full stand-up shower, sink, pump room, and Mama's Ooh. pride and joy. Washing machine. Washing machine. Very handy at times. All our pumps are relatively easily accessible. And as you'll see, gas hot water in there as well, which is another feature about this boat that we love. Instant hot water all the time, every time. Moving forward, more storage here through the corridor. And here. Mmm, the nerve center of the boat, electronically speaking. This is the water maker that I put in, all used through these dials here. Boost pump, main pump, runs straight, tapped into the tank. So you never have to touch anything but those dials. The whole pump system assembly, three pre-filters and the big membranes. The unit is from Watermakers Australia, and we have to say their customer service is second to none. Any troubles, they've been on the phone every time. Air conditioning, bilge pumps, automatic and manual, tank alarms. This is my gas detector. Jenny is also run from here. Start and stop, set and forget, really. Although, a lot of maintenance required on that one, hey, Mama? All right, all the breaker switches. Here's AC down this side, here's DC down this side. Inside, all the wiring, everything's numbered. These are all my MPPT controllers, the solar controllers. There's three of those, one, two, three, split between the solar panels that we've got. And that is a 3000 multi-plus Victron inverter, charger inverter, works a treat. Owner's berth. Oh, what are you doing? Well, the bed was nicely made this morning until somebody decided to come in. What are you doing, Goldilocks? So again, this is a queen size bed and you'll see that it's up on top of the bridge deck here. So the tunnel is underneath of the catamaran. Instead of having it in the corridors, which lengthens and widens the hull, having the bed up on top here <laughs> means the hulls can be kept quite fine, which means faster movement through the water. And now, if you're wondering where do we keep our clothes, um, this boat came with a boat version of a walking wardrobe, which is pretty Yay. epic. We have increased the hanging space, but look at how deep it is. And obviously some storage at the bow where we keep suitcases and more sailing gear, but just having the opportunity just having the option to hang your clothes instead of having them all crunched up in little compartments as we had in latitude is so amazing. Um, it looks like there's heaps of room when you're in there. Not so much room when I'm in there. No, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this wardrobe wasn't thought for gorilla size beings. <laughs> yeah. This here is one of the aircon outlets. So both forward. Uh, cabins, this room and the guest room have aircon and the saloon. Not Kaya's room, you don't get air conditioning. Yeah, she doesn't need any. You don't need it. You're tough. You're a boat baby. Welcome to the saloon. So under the couch here we have air conditioners. I'm not sure if I would have chosen to have air conditioners on a boat, but I tell you what, there's been some days where we have absolutely loved to have them. Normally you probably have cans and dry food under here, but we've got air conditioners and on this side we have batteries. I recently switched over from AGM to lithium batteries. Three times the amount of power usage and half the weight. So we now have 840 amp hours of lithium batteries underneath that couch there. And that is 735 usable 
amp hours, which is a ton. We got 1.7 kilowatts of solar power on the boat. Of course, that's what's advertised. You don't get that, but it's enough to run everything that we need. Unless we have days and days of cloud, we are all good. Engine bays. Engine bays in the Fusion are at the back. Again, good and bad, open to the weather, but don't have to lift a bunk to get in there. Ooh, but I spent some time down here. We have Yanmar 3YM 30s, and we love them. Dear little tractor engines. If you've been watching the channel, you would know that this engine has been filled with seawater twice, and twice has been rescued. So I'm starting to know these engines by every bolt. As you can see, there's not a lot of room down here, but uh, compared to our mono, this is still a fair bit of space. Although I do get jealous when I see those boat tours with people just walking around their engine. It's cheating. Changing the impeller is lots of fun. Welcome to the little segment we call the little things, the sweet little things that we love about Rio. A lot of the stuff that's been our improvements that we've done over the years. I'm going to start with my most favourite of all. Rio is a hydraulic steering. So that means that the hydraulic steering goes from the helm down to here and then there's a bar across that connect the port rudder to the starboard rudder. So if there's a problem with the hydraulic steering, you can't steer the boat. You can't manually do it. You can't re-rig it, can't re-line it. You've got troubles. So, didn't have emergency steering until now. It's one of our latest jobs. Look at that beast. So, I drilled a hole through the top of the step. It's here on the port side. That hole goes straight down to the top of the rudder stock. Then I had this piece of aluminium while well, I cut it and then I had this little internal bit machined and made and that slides on over the top of the rudder stock and turns into a tiller. Now the problem with Hydraulic steering is, well, one of the good things and the bad things, is that without turning the helm, that hydraulic steering would not let you turn the rudder stock. So in here, I have a little handle. I slip through, I turn that handle. Once the handle is turned, it takes all the pressure out of the hydraulic lines. And the tiller, actually works. So not only is it an emergency tiller system in case the hydraulic steering goes down, but on a sweet summer sunny day, whee, you can steer this cat and feel the ocean. Yeah, so people always get confused when they come to our sink because they don't know where to get their drinking water from. So basically the big one is our main uh, tap. It's fresh water and it's filter tap. Uh, this one here is also fresh water, but it's got a foot pump. So we pedal on it. Mmm, no using any electricity. Dad likes that one. And silent. Also, yes, our water pump is quite noisy. So when Kai is sleeping, we avoid using the pump and then we use the foot pump. And third and last is this guy here is salt water. Yeah. yeah. So salt water. So when we in nice clean um, waters, we normally use salt water to rinse and do that first wash, and then save our fresh water for the last wash. And that's it. I highly recommend if you have lithium batteries that you put in what is called a smart shunt. Got to say that carefully. It's Victron Connect. Everything's Bluetooth. But what it does is, these are the solar panels, port, starboard, and the targa. But this shunt measures everything that comes in and out of those batteries. So at the moment you can see we've got 26 amps coming in just from the solar panels. 
you got the voltage of the batteries, you can go through the history, cumulative, how much you use a day, the trends, the whole thing. Delightful little device. Definitely in the sweet things category is the gas detector and solenoid. So this little button right here turns the gas off. On a mono hull, you had to go out into the weather to turn the gas off, so we rarely did it, even though we should have. But now going to bed, we can turn that off. Plus, there's two sensors. One that goes to the gas hot water in the bathroom and one that is just underneath the stove. So if it detects any, which I test at least twice a year, boom, shuts the solenoid off, no more gas. As anyone who pulls up the anchor regularly on a catamaran knows, it's the one thing you cannot see. And because the platform's so wide, the chain can go this way, the chain can go that way, the chain can be everywhere. How do you know where it is if you don't have your wife on the front? Anchor cam. Dun, 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 dun. No, oh, that's your own creation, isn't it? It is. I'm particularly proud of this. Not just because it was $120 off Amazon, but this anchor cam means that I can pull everything up from the helm because we have helm control for the windlass. And it means I don't need to interrupt whatever Mari is doing. And no matter what the winds are, no matter how the boat is moving around, I can pull up that anchor dead straight every time. All on a switch, just here. Because the boat is our home, we leave it all the time, sometimes for days at a time, sometimes longer. So for that, we've put in a system called Boat Command, and uh, it's not that hard to install with a little electrical knowledge. And what that means is if you're leaving it just for a couple of hours or even days, weeks, you can check in on everything. So if you have a look at mine here, you can see the bilge pumps, if any of the bilge pumps go off, I get an alarm straight to the phone. It'll tell me what the battery voltage is. If we clicked into shore power, it'll tell me if that fails. There's a security monitor, so I've got a few of those. The motion sensor. It'll tell you what the weather is on the inside, the weather on the outside, and it has a geo fence on it as well, and a map. So if the boat goes any further than 50 meters from where we left it, again, another alarm to the phone. Bit of peace of mind, but I like it. Okay, that's the end of the boat tour. Hope you enjoyed it. We have a 3.8 meter tender, so we're off to the beach today. It's a high field, it's about the biggest we can fit on the back, but we use it for everything, getting to the beach, going surfing, and we love it. We would love for you to leave a comment below, any questions you might wanna ask, and hit subscribe and click on the little bell to get an alert. We hope you enjoy our adventures, and, um, we're off now. Yeah.